the citizens of Athens, Thebes, and Sparta fought each other constantly. But when they were threatened by outsiders, they would bury their differences, join forces, and march off to fight their common foe. In 490 BC, that foe was the greatest empire on earth, Persia. The shipping lanes of the Aegean Sea are all that separate Greece from her worst enemy in the 5th century BC. The Persian Empire, the mightiest in the world, is angered by constant Greek attacks on its coast. Persia is vast, as big as the United States. Greece is no bigger than New York State. Persia decides to teach the Greeks a lesson. As her mighty forces set sail, the Greek way of war is about to be tested. In the greatest sea battle of the ancient world, the Greeks use their custom-made fighting ship, the Trireme. But first, the Greeks and Persians will fight on land. In 490 BC, an army of 25,000 Persians landed at the Bay of Marathon, confident of victory. Eleven thousand hoplites had left Athens to do battle at Marathon. While the city was undefended, a Persian fleet approached Athens. The toughest troops in Greece, the Spartans, refused to help their Athenian neighbors. Panic gripped the city. The Athenian phalanx must win at Marathon and win quickly. The security of Athens is at stake. The hoplites stared at the Persians a mile away across the plain. Then they broke into a run. The Persians thought it suicidal madness. The assault was so brutal, it carried the day. 6,400 Persians lay dead. But Athens was still at risk. The Persian navy was still closing on Athens. A message to resist at all costs had to get through to the city. But Athens and Marathon are 26 miles apart. The Greeks sent for the only man who might get there in time a runner named Pheidippides. Pheidippides set off on his legendary run, the very first marathon. As he delivered his message, he died of exhaustion. But he didn't die in vain. Athens took heart and held on until the army of Marathon returned. When the Persians saw them, they turned and fled. In this first great clash between East and West, between Persians and Greeks, the Greek way of war triumphed. Decisive action won the day. In thanksgiving for victory, the Athenians built the magnificent treasury at Delphi. Ten years after Marathon, Persia launched a second invasion. A Greek oracle foretold the wooden wall alone shall not fall. The Athenian commander, Themistocles, interpreted wooden wall to mean ships, fighting ships. 
The Athenians built a fleet of state-of-the-art fighting ships called triremes. The trireme was the fastest ship afloat. Powered by 170 oarsmen, it had a top speed of 11 knots, or 12 and a half miles per hour. Its main weapon was a giant timber cased in bronze that projected from the prow. With this, the trireme would simply ram any ship that got in its way. The fleet of triremes was completed just in time. In 480 BC, the Persian Emperor Xerxes approached Greece with the biggest army and navy yet assembled, 200,000 men. In a two-pronged attack, the Persian army attacked Greece from the north, while its fleet approached Athens near the island of Salamis. As the Persian troops marched south, they found their way barred by 7,000 hoplites at Thermopylae, a narrow pass that was the key to Greece. At the core of the hoplite force were 300 of the most feared and disciplined troops in all Greece, the Spartans. Their king, Leonidas, was in command. A Persian was sent on horseback to observe what the troops were doing. Some of them were stripped for exercise, while others were combing their hair. No one attempted to catch him or took the least notice of him. The spy watched them in astonishment and reported back. The Persian generals laughed at the Greeks with their absurd notions of warfare. Their very presence seemed mere impudent and reckless folly. Enraged by the calm of the Spartans, the Persian commander threw his army against them. The Persian attack against Leonidas lasted four days. The Spartans fought until their swords broke and then fought on with their hands and teeth until Leonidas and every one of his men lay dead. As Xerxes and his Persian army marched on Athens, the Athenians put their faith in their wooden wall and withdrew to the island of Salamis. Then as now, Salamis was a thriving port. Where these vessels lie peacefully at anchor, 800 Persian warships assembled for battle. On the morning of September 23rd, 480 BC, Xerxes, Persian emperor, king of kings, sat on a golden throne atop a hill just west of Athens. Beneath him sparkled the narrow straits of Salamis. He confidently watched his mighty fleet, sure of victory. But Themistocles, commander of the Athenian fleet, was well prepared. Outnumbered two to one, he planned to draw the Persians into the narrow waters where their huge fleet could not maneuver. Themistocles held back his triremes in the Straits of Salamis, daring the Persians to attack. Persians took the bait and sailed into the narrows. Themistocles gave the order and the Athenians rode hard toward the Persians.
captain steered his craft straight on one another. The whole force went down, broken, when ship rammed ship. With splintered ships now locked together, the top decks became a battleground where the Greeks fought the Persians in bloody hand-to-hand -hand combat. They might have been tuna or netted fish. Shores and reefs filled up with our dead. For they kept on spearing and gutting us with splintered oars and bits of wreckage, while moaning and screams drowned out the sea noise, till night's black face closed it all in. In an eerie echo of the past, the hulks of modern steel ships rest rotting where the wrecks of the Persian fleet lay splintered two and a half thousand years ago. The Greek tactic of decisive engagement on carefully chosen ground had worked on land at Marathon. At Salamis, it worked at sea. The Greek way of war was poised to take over the world.